Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a slightly different model from one that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Now the one I'm holding here is the good old Nano Talon that we looked at a video a couple of weeks ago and it's a fantastic little FPV plane. A couple of things you have to be aware of about centering the servos and also the centre of gravity needs to be a little bit further back but we're going to look at its little brother. Now this is the ZOHD Dart. Now this one again has come from Tech Distribution and a very big shout out to Key. Tech Distribution are people that sell to the people who sell to us as end users. So you can't buy direct from them, but what you can do is if you're a reseller of radio control equipment, you can get your bits and pieces from those guys. They're based in Cumbria here in the UK and they provide stock to an awful lot of shops across Europe. Now, if we very quickly compare the boxes between the Nano Talon and the Dart, you will notice that even though I thought the Nano Talon box was small, the box for the Dart is absolutely tiny and they have very similar specs. So this one's got a built-in stabilizer too. It's gonna to snap together with magnets, but it's more of a flying wing style. So let me first of all take it out the box, show you some of the key features, talk a little bit about the setup and how it all goes together, the motors and other bits and pieces too, and then let's take it out, give it a fly, and I'll do a quick summary slide at the end. So as you open the box, the first thing you're going to spot are the wings. These are little stubby wings. This time the controls are out with the servos actually in the wing itself. So a uh, nice carbon reinforcement actually here. And uh, you can see it's a little connector for the servo that goes into the main body. Now, my little connectors seem to be working fine. I think that potentially is something you just have to be careful of, make sure that there's no rubbish getting in there two great whacking strong magnets in the middle that are going to keep those together in the middle of the body. So you don't need any glue, you can put this together at the field so it's very easy to transport in a backpack and even easier than the Nano Talon because of the really small size. Now these vertical stabilizers again just pop in and are held by a single strong magnet and I've not had to use any glue on this at all. And the body is very reminiscent of the Nano Talon and you have uh, room for a reinforcing spar. Uh, you have the places where the wings plug in and you have the motor itself. The motor is a 2206, 2400 kV motor and inside we'll see in a second a six by three prop. The other thing you'll find in the bottom of the, of the box is a square hollow rod. That is a carbon fiber rod and that is designed to help keep the wings nice and stiff. Now that wasn't something that was on the Nano Talon. The Nano Talon had a slightly different setup in the middle. But with that through the wings, it means that they're nice and stiff. Opening the canopy at the front, again, we have absolutely tons and tons of room in here. There's that little propeller again. We have the same stabilizer that was in the Nano Talon, so exactly the same setup. You don't do any mixes on your radio. You're just gonna have your elevators, aileron, and your throttle. Don't need any rudder control on this. There's no rudder on it at all. Then at the front, we have a nice big opening for your FPV camera that will just plug in. Underneath, we have a plate for cooling. And to put it together is just as simple as the Nano Talon. You just push the wings home and uh, you'll feel them clip in. Make sure that that reinforcing carbon spar is all the way into the model. Slide on the other wing, clip it into place so that the servo connectors are ready. And that is pretty much it built really. So even easier and quicker to build than the Nano Talon. Couple of thoughts here about putting this thing together. The manual, just like the one for the Nano Talon is very, very simplistic. It's only a two-sided piece of paper. One side shows you how to put it together, which again, is just what we've seen. Gives you the specs on everything. Inside this, it has the same 30 amp ESC with the one amp battery eliminator circuit that it had in the Nano Talon. In that Nano Talon, I replaced it because it had a couple more servos. With this thing only having two servos to run the Elevons, I'm reasonably confident that it probably can handle that with the flight controller and the receiver as well. Flying weight, it says, is 356 grams. Uh, I'll put a little insert. This is where mine ended up. Uh, I've been initially test flying it with an 850 milliamp hour 3S battery. That's given me a center of gravity uh, spot on with the little CG marks under the wing. On the back side of the manual, there is the ZOHD stabilizer. Again, very similar setup from the other ones that we've looked at. Uh, you're only gonna have to plug in your 
aileron elevator and throttle you won't do any mixing on the radio at all just straightforward channel and you're also going to have a mode switch that you're going to plug into the receiver as well again just like the previous versions the way the mode switch works isn't very well explained in the manual but a low channel value i.e. a thousand microseconds is going to give you full six axis flight mode and that's also great for beginner pilots and also for launching too because it kind of keeps it level and then in a high position i.e. kind of the 2000 microsecond mark that is going to give you three axis stabilization and if it is in the middle about 1500 it's going to have no stabilization at all I wouldn't recommend flying this one without any stabilization I made that comment with the nano talon this one is even more twitchy I would recommend you calibrate the throttle as it says, make sure that the prop isn't installed when you do it. The way the servos came installed in mine are pretty good. Uh, it's They look like the kind of digital servos similar to what was in that Nano Talon and the servo arms are pretty much at 90 degrees. I didn't feel like I had to go around and check the setup on this one in the same way that I did with the other model. There is absolutely tons of room in this nose. So I'll show you in a second how I've installed the FPV equipment. So I'm using a Monster V2 from Foxeer for the camera. I've got one of the Elite transmitters from Hobby King and I'm using one of my favorite antennas, those little Pagoda antennas from Menace RC. I've actually mounted the FPV stuff under the canopy and I've also wired the VBAT wire from the FPV camera into the balance tap that I'm using to power all the FPV electronics. That allows me to see exactly what the voltage on the battery is as I'm flying around. The camera just pushes home into the front and even with quite a wild field of view camera, you still don't get any inclusion because of the recess that's been cut out, but it is recessed nicely. So if it comes down and hits anything, hopefully the foam will absorb most of that hit. And again, just quickly to explain what that little bit of plastic was in the kit, uh, the camera lens fits beautifully in this Foxeer Monster 2 camera that I'm using here. If you had a camera that had a smaller lens, you could include this little surround just to help support it and keep it centralized in the bay. The FPV kit that I've used goes together really straightforward. I can plug the camera directly into the video transmitter and all I had to do was then make an adapter for the JST connector so it was a balance plug and I can plug that into the balance connector of the 3S battery I wanted. The connection for the receiver, again I tried to use PPM, I tried to do all kinds of things like varying the amount of channels that was being sent across and gave up again sadly and used an X8R which is a bit overkill for a plane like this but with the setup on the radio this thing is flying great. So now we've Got it together, we've installed it. I've got it so it balances on those CG marks. FPV gears installed. Let me take it out to the field and show you some flying footage and talk about some of the tips and tricks with this little model. So here's video from one of the very first flights. I'm just putting the model together here. It's on a hat cam, which is a GoPro Session 5. So I tried to match the settings as best as I can, but as you'll see in a second, it is a very foggy day so I was a little bit worried when I was flying this that I was going to lose it in the fog but managed the flight okay now I haven't got connected the FPV gear here but we've got the center of gravity pretty much spot on so I'll just make sure the control surfaces are working and uh, make sure I'm in launch mode and then show you how easy this little thing is to fly again using an 850 milliamp hour battery initially and let me just give it a launch and away it goes, auto level and climbing for the sky, climbing very, very quickly, in fact. Now, this is on the launch mode, which is the six axis stabilization with auto level. And the challenge that I had initially was it lost a little bit of elevator authority. So I was struggling to get the plane back down. And as you can see, it was starting to become a little bit of a small dot. So I thought, OK, what I'll do is let me pop it out of six axis stabilization launch beginner mode and pop it into three axis mode and it became an awful lot more lively. Now initially I'm flying around about 50% throttle, got tons and tons and tons of power at 50% throttle and in a minute I'll drop it down to 30 and we'll get a little bit slower and I'll be able to get a little bit closer in. But the feel of the model on the three axis stabilization is fantastic. I've got lots of authority and it's flying really really nicely. In a moment I'll do a loop and it's 
absolutely great for acrobatics, but it's feeling super stable. Now, admittedly, this day, part of the reason that the fog is here and the mist is because there is absolutely no wind. So this is kind of ideal conditions for this thing. Now on the screen, I'll put the details of how long the 850 milliamp hour battery lasts me. If you wanted a larger battery, you could actually pop one inside this thing. There is room to move it a little bit further back. But 850 in the position that I've got it gives perfect central gravity on those marks and they appear to work really nicely. It's flying really well and when I take my hands off the sticks the stabilizer is getting it straight and level and if I put it in an attitude in the three axis stabilization mode I'm in mean now, take my hands off the sticks, it kind of keeps it at that attitude and keeps on flying. My tip here, I would probably keep the elevator throws nice and high but you could potentially dial back the aileron throws a little bit on your radio as I've got loads of authority for both but I probably have a little bit more aileron authority than I need so I wasn't having to really push it. The landing was nice and soft. I could bleed off an awful lot of speed. One of the big surprises here is how well this thing flies slowly which I wasn't expecting. First of all, I love the fact that there's so much room inside this. Uh, despite its very small size, this big wide flat nose means there's tons of room in here for your battery, for your FPV equipment. There's great recesses for the camera in the front. A lot of thought has gone into the design of this one, just like the Nano Talent. So big thumbs up to ZOHD for actually having their coffee before they sat down and designed this thing. The inbuilt stabilizer works really well. I think it's even more important to have those kind of stabilization systems on these really small wings because if you turned it off and tried to fly in manual mode it would become very very twitchy indeed and it works really nicely that launch mode gets it up into the sky safely I'm not sure whether I'd call it beginner mode on this particular one as I was struggling to lose altitude once I'd got nice and high it has very gentle stalling characteristics. Now that whole kind of forward swept wing thing is a bit of a, a wacky design, but it works phenomenally well. And that's because the way tip stalls actually tend to happen is the ends of the wing tend to stall and that's the part that drop. And the reason that the ends of the wings tend to be the bits that stall is because those are the most rearward part of the front part of the wing. Now I'm not going to get into advanced aerodynamics, I've got a lovely book from NASA about advanced aerodynamic theory, but the short version is because the back part of the leading edge of the wing is by the body, that's where the stall happens. So if you do get into a situation where you've got lots of up elevator and you bleed off too much speed, this thing is unbelievably well behaved for a flying wing style model. The setup was super simple, I just made sure that the centre of gravity was about right, popped everything in, there's loads of room at the top for the FPV equipment, camera snuffed in the nose, I went through the setup in the Foxeer camera so that I had my voltage displayed in the lower left hand corner and then that was it really. I love the fact it uses standard prop connectors, now the Nano Talon if you remember had a screw on prop this one doesn't so if I break this prop and that is a potential here because there's no prop guard at all touch wood with the flights I've had so far I've got away with it but I'm absolutely expecting for one of these flights when I land for me to snap the prop off it might be worthwhile actually adding some kind of prop protector but I have an idea about that I'll mention that in a second this plane is available from lots of different places including Banggood but here is the price on Banggood and I think that's a pretty good price for something that's this capable and flies this well. A couple of things to be aware of, watch for wear on those little servo connectors for the wing. As you saw when I crashed the wing did pop off, that's absolutely fine. Not sure how many connection and disconnection cycles those little connectors are going to take before they start getting unhappy. If they do get unhappy then I'll just hot glue the wings in place and run a servo extension right the way into the middle of the canopy. I don't think it's a disaster. Personally I'd probably like those things to be a little bit chunkier just to survive the wear and tear that potentially going to get taking the wings on and off if you're transporting it or the wings popping off when you land in grass and they get snagged. The PPM mode on the stabilizer is useless again, I tried to get it working, I would have loved to use this with a little XSR or similar FR Sky receiver, I'm having to use a big whacking X8R. So one comment to ZOHD is please put things like the FR Sky receivers onto your equipment to test before you release it because a lot of us are flying that and lots of flying other things to be fair and it's a very very common complaint that the PPM implementation is tricky to get going. 
Watch that central gravity with larger batteries. Again, with that little 850 in the nose for me, a little 3S battery, it was absolutely happy pootling around at 25, 30% throttle, 50% throttle, it was going at a fair lick. Giving it 100% throttle, it really, really started to move. I personally didn't feel the need to put 4S uh, batteries in there. I think you probably could without any problem at all, but I find that 3S is absolutely fine. I am going to look though for a 1500 milliamp hour pack that is going to fit in the nose, and if I find one, I'll pop a link in the description. Now going back to my comment about prop protector, one of the things I'm potentially going to do is get one of those nice industrial cable ties and pop one of those through a reinforced hole at the back part of the fuselage. The idea with that being is with that dangling down, that will provide some support so it isn't the prop that's getting struck. It will uh, it will kind of bend and flex as it comes into land. I've heard in a couple of forums people talking about nose weights that were in the nose of this model. Uh, I've had a look at mine and I can't find them, but people talking that was like a 40 gram lead weight in the nose. Uh, I haven't found that on this, but I'll continue to look. And the last point is the manual is basic, just like the nanotalon that we looked at. It's a two-sided piece of paper, which isn't enough. But hopefully by watching this video, you've got a better idea of how to set this up. The key things are you only need to set up your throttle elevator and aileron on the radio, along with the mode switch with a high and low position for the two stabilization modes. And don't put any mixing in for the elevons. The stabilizer will do all of that hard work for you. Now, I'm planning to do a comparison video between this dart and the Nano Talon in a separate video because I think it's going to take too long to talk about it. But my very quick summary is this is something that I would probably recommend for a pilot with a little bit more experience flying wings and with a little bit faster reflexes and more experiences. The Nano Talon is a fantastic plane for FPV, but I think it's a little bit more forgiving, particularly for newer pilots. And I did mention in that video that for a beginner mode, it still performs really nicely and doesn't get too carried away. I think for this ZOHD Dart, my experience of this is in the beginner launch mode, it's great to get it up in the air and get it out of your hand without any drama, but as soon as you get any altitude at all, you need to be out of that mode into the three axis stabilization mode to footle about. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.